Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 world tutorial video. In this video I am going to teach you how to use an SD card with FATFS using the STM32 SPI peripheral. Uh, but before we get to that I am going to um, show something else. Earlier today when I was using STM32 cube ID it popped up that there was updates available. Now, I never ever update STM32 cube ID from within. The reasoning for that, my reasoning for that is that I have experienced STM, ST release buggy versions of STM32 cube ID. Uh, and if I update from within, it's a really tedious process to roll back to a previous version. So whenever I get one of these warnings, I download a complete new version. I go to the STM32 cube ID main um, site and I go and I download, in my case, the Linux installer for STM32 cube ID. I have already done that. Uh, so let me unzip that file. So unzip um, I put them in downloads. Uh, it's called uh, so the new version is 117. Before I was using 116.1. So let me unzip that one. It will in the Linux installer version. It will be <coughs> a shell script archive. So uh, I can run it like um, 17. I simply run that. It will verify the archive and it will uncompress the installer and run the installer there. I probably have to accept that. It needs to install the, yeah, it can do that. And I usually take the default installation directory, then it installs a new version. Um, it's usually quite fast. I'm uh, running the a version of the FATFS that we made the last time, which is basically keeping track of the uptime and it is reading a big file every 10 seconds and doing a directory uh, output. Okay, it's done here. Uh, do I accept that? Yeah, I do. I will never ever read it, but do I want to install a second? No, I don't have one of those, so that's not necessary. So that's it. STM32 uh, Cube IDE is now installed. Normally I run it like this uh, in the earlier videos. Now I'll have a new version that I can run. So let me try to run that. Now. It will suggest my default workspace, uh, a default workspace, but I don't use that. So, um, STM32 fun. I'm using this folder as my workspace. So let me launch that. Every time you install a new version of STM32 Cube IDE, you will forget the workspaces. So it will show me some release notes. Uh, I will normally read those quite religiously. I'm not going to do it now, but uh, I will read them. Uh, it's, it's quite important. And it will open some features. Okay. There. So now we're pretty much up uh, as we were uh, earlier. <coughs> It, I'll accept that, yes. Um, 
So I think this is pretty much it. Uh, Typically, when we get a new version, it will need to upgrade the STM, the ST-Link uh, firmware. Let's see if that is the case. Or did we already found the, find the first bug? Uh, it's probably just busy scanning all these uh, directories. There we go. So uh, we can open our device in update mode. And is it the same version? It is. So there is no need to upgrade <coughs> the ST-Link firmware in this case. So that's uh, pretty much all it is. There might be some settings that needs to be updated. Um, let's see, preferences. Do I have my C? Uh, I usually change my code style. Uh, formatter. I, I still remember all that. So it, it remembers most things except the opening of the workspace. So uh, in this video, as mentioned, I am going to use the SD card in SPI mode. In an earlier video, I used it in SDIO mode, which is described here. The, and I had to use a special a PCB for that, that I happen to have lying around. In this video, we are going to instead use an SPI device. And for that, I have created a simple adapter using an SD card, a SD to micro SD card adapter, where I soldered some jumper leads on and um, um, install that. Let me see if I can, I have it here, uh, sorry, there. I have uh, connected that STR to, to my STM32 Cube ID board, and uh, it is just hooked up to the uh, SPI. I am not going to go through all the details with FAT, which I did in the previous video. If you want to learn that, I strongly uh, suggest you go back and look at that uh, video. So if we look at the, I have created a project, the Previous one was STIO SD FedFS. This one is SPI SD FedFS. So if we look at the now, it tells me when I open the STM32 CubeMX, it will tell me that this one was generated by an earlier version. Uh, do I want to migrate? Yes, I want to migrate. Uh, this, uh, I should maybe have done this before uh, recording the video. Sometimes, first time you start it, it takes a while because it needs to download new libraries. But let's see if it actually comes up without problems. Oh, it did. That's very nice. So this is my new project. And uh, if you remember last time, all the SDIO uh, lines were up here data line and etc. Now it is hooked up to an SPI line. So I have created, well, I have created my usual stuff, the lead. I'm not going to go through all the fat code. Uh, that was covered uh, sufficiently in the previous video. Uh, I would strongly suggest you go back and look at the previous video for that part of the code. But I am going to uh, explain how the SPI uh, SD FAT is implemented. Now, if we go down to our uh, FATFS target, you will see that the STM32 CubeMX is generating this file, this file, and this file. But these two files are the driver files that has been implemented by a third party. Um, if we look at the file, you'll see up here who actually, this guy, uh, I took it from his GitHub repository. You can find it there. Um, now, the driver contains a initialize status, read, write, and IOCTL. Um, if we look at the source code, there is a few things that needs to be defined uh, outside the source code. First of all, it you can see it refers to a handle type def, which is an ST SD 
underscore SPI handle. That one is defined in the global include file up here. So that is pointing to uh, HSPI1. If you wanted to run this out of HSPI2, uh, we can simply change it in here and no changes are necessary in the source code. The other thing that is necessary is the name of the chip select needs to be SD underscore chip select. Um, so that one is also defined. Now <clears throat> you'll notice down here that there is a fast and slow, uh, slow and fast setting. The problem with SD cards is that they need to be initialized in at a very slow speed and then you speed it up afterwards. So we will be running with a bought prescaler of 128 initially and then we'll switch to a prescaler of 2 once it has been initialized. That is all being done down in the... Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Use a initialize is being done down here. You can see it switched to slow first, then it is doing the initialization here, and then it ends by switching it to fast clock. Uh, so that is pretty much as fast as it is possible to run with SPI. Once the driver files has been put in, I'll show you later where to get those, uh, you need to update these files are the ones that are generated with CubeID, uh, CubeMX. <coughs> and you can see in here, as everything else with Cube, uh, Cube uh, MX, it will contain some user code areas. And in each of these user code areas down in these function, the initialize, the status, the read, the write, and the IOCTL, we will call our corresponding uh, function in these two, uh, the driver files, the actual driver files. <coughs> um, conveniently, uh, they're using exactly the same argument that uh, original code, so it is very, very easy uh, to implement that. Uh, that is pretty much all there is uh, to get this up and running. So let's try to build uh, this project. And it builds. Let's try to run it. There. Let's switch to our cell output. There we go. So it reads the total uptime. It writes that big file. Uh, it also, it doesn't comment that here, but it also creates the tick file. And there we go. So the tick file is now 380 bytes, the uptime. The big file is 100 kilo. I mentioned that earlier. No, I didn't. Hang on, actually. So if we look at the code in here, the, the FedFS code, the only difference between this one and the STIO file is that I when I create that big file uh, here, I only make it 100 kilobyte. In the previous one, we did one megabyte, but since SPI is much, much slower, I don't want to <coughs> have to wait that long uh, to read this. Um, you can see that it reads this file in 360 milliseconds. I think SDIO was actually reading uh, about one megabyte in 200 uh, milliseconds. Now, part of that is because SPI is slower, but that is actually only part of the explanation. The other part of that explanation is I'm using a much slower SD card here. Uh, this one is the one I used uh, for the SDIO example, and it's quite quick. Uh, this one is quite slow, and that is the one I'm using in this example with my homemade uh, SPI adapter here. Uh, as for the code, you can go to the STM32 world um, repository on GitHub. I have a STM32 fun, and down here the code will be uh, here, SPI, and it will have the FedFS, and you can simply take the driver files from here if you like. Uh, it is those two files. These three are generated by STM32 cube ID. These two files you need to 
at yourself. So that is pretty much all there is to it. Um, again, please go back to the previous video and watch that uh, for the details about how I work with FedFS, how you work with FedFS. But the SPI, SPI versus SDIO driver issue, uh, that is all explained in this video as usual. If you feel that you learned anything from this video, please do like and subscribe. Uh, and I love getting comments. I read all the comments and I usually reply the comments. Uh, so, so please comment down below. And uh, that's pretty much it. As usual, have a wonderful rest of the day.